In this video, we're going to be looking at the mechanism for the reaction between an alkene and concentrated sulfuric acid. This is also like adding halogen or a hydrogen halide classed as an electrophilic addition reaction. So it's a, quite a similar mechanism to that of a halogen or hydrogen halide. Now, before we get going, I want to show you what the structure of sulfuric acid actually is. We've got a central sulfur atom. We've got two double bonded oxygens coming off that. And then we've got two OH groups coming off that as well. So that's actually our structure of sulfuric acid. It's really important that you understand that so we can look at what, well, what part of that is actually an electrophile. So in this molecule, it's the O to H bond that actually has a dipole present on it. So the O is delta negative, the H is delta positive. That's going to be our electrophile in this process. So just setting up our first diagram, if you like, of our mechanism, I'm going to set up ethene. Now that double bond, of course, is the main player in this process. Underneath, I'm setting up what looks very weird, but I'm focusing on the electrophile, the H delta plus, and the O delta minus, and then underneath what we've got is the rest of that sulfuric acid molecule, so SO3H. So it looks a bit weird in the way I've set it up, but know that is obviously the molecule of sulfuric acid. So first step that we've got here is that pair of electrons from the pi bond is attracted to that H delta plus, just like it was in the uh, hydrogen halide reaction. And then the second part of this is that that bond between the hydrogen and the oxygen breaks again, just like we looked at in the other electrophilic addition mechanism. So that pair of electrons between the hydrogen and the oxygen, they both go to the oxygen. So headlines here, the permanent dipole, the electrophile is on that O delta minus H delta plus. And then of course, what we've got is the reaction can proceed as an electrophilic addition reaction, just like we've seen in the previous tutorial with the hydrogen halides. And then we move on to our intermediate. Now our intermediate, again, just like it was in the previous mechanism, we've got a carbocation being formed, the hydrogen, from that OH permanent dipole, that bonds to one of the carbons, leaving a positive carbocation. And what we end up with here is a completely negative OSO3H, making sure you put the negative on there, of course. So that lone pair on that oxygen, that's what's going to be now donated to the carbocation. So a curly arrow from that lone pair on the oxygen, very precisely off the oxygen, to that delta, well, not the delta, but the fully positive carbon. Now, moving on to our final product, I'm having to put this a little bit lower, but what we end up with is this molecule. So it's still, of course, two carbons long. We've got the hydrogen on the left that we've added and the OSO3H added to the second carbon in that intermediate process there. So what have we actually made? So what we've actually made here is ethyl, hydrogen sulfate. That's the name of this molecule. Of course, if you were looking at maybe a propene in this reaction, you'd end up with propyl hydrogen sulfate and so on and so forth. So really important note here is that Markovnikov's rule also applies in this process. If you haven't seen the tutorial on Markovnikov's rule and asymmetrical alkenes and the electrophilic addition reaction, I highly recommend you look at that because they call on that a lot in the exams. It's not specific to the reaction of halogens and hydrogen halides with alkenes. It also factors here as well. So it really depends on whether it's a primary, secondary or tertiary carbocation that you're forming in the intermediate. Like I said, check out that tutorial. So now we've made this molecule here, this ethyl hydrogen sulfate. You know what? This isn't very useful to us. The other part of the process here is a secondary reaction that can actually occur from this. That secondary process here is known as hydration. Yeah, and you guessed it, that's basically adding water to it. But what's the point of this? What are we actually gonna be making if we hydrate this uh, you know, alkyl hydrogen sulfate? So we've got ethyl hydrogen sulfate. So let's kick off with that. So luckily we don't have to know the mechanism for this. So what we start with is our full displayed formula of in this case, ethyl hydrogen sulfate, and we can react that with water. Now what we end up with, the main organic molecule is actually an alcohol. So what happens with that water is it replaces the hydrogen sulfate part with an OH. 
So what we're producing is an alcohol here. But as a consequence of this reaction, we actually produce H2SO4. I say produce, it's really regenerated. So the H2SO4 is actually regenerated when we put water in there. So technically you could look at this as a catalyst. So this electrophilic addition reaction between conch H2SO4 and alkene looks like this. Now making the hydrogen sulfate, you might want that for something, somebody might want it. But as far as we're concerned, this is the first part of the process of turning an alkene into an alcohol. So we need to know the mechanism for this first part here. We don't need to know a mechanism for the second part. Just know that when we add water to the hydrogen sulfate, the alkyl hydrogen sulfate, then that produces an alcohol and the H2SO4 is regenerated. So that's one way in which we can turn an alkene into an alcohol, conch H2SO4 followed by water. There is another way of doing this using a different acid, the concentrated phosphoric acid, but you know what, we'll detail that in another tutorial. But as far as you guys are concerned, this is a really important electrophilic addition reaction to add to the one we looked at previously with the halogens and hydrogen halides.